Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell, and today's video is for those of you who are just starting to read notes on the staff. This is, as I often say, learning a new language. You're learning to read that note and interpret it as to which string on the harp it is. And the easiest way to start is with middle C. And I will say that as harpists, our job is a little easier than some other instruments because our C's are red. All the way up and down the harp, every note that is in the scale C is red. Now, caveat, for those of you who are in Europe, this will be a strange system because here in the States, we use alphabet letters. If you know the song from Sound of Music, Do a deer, a female deer, hooray, a drop of golden sun, do re mi so fa la ti do, is called solfege. And that's the system that is, I understand, most frequently used in Europe. Here in the States, we use the alphabet system. So the scale is a little odd with the alphabet because it starts on C, C, D, E, F, G, and then it goes back to A, A, B, and then C. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And now we're gonna look at middle C. First of all, you have to find middle C on your harp because you probably know already that harps come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. So you, first of all, you wanna count the number of red strings you have. I have one, that's my lowest string right down there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because there are six, there isn't one that's right in the middle. So the middle C on this harp is the C that's just below the middle. So that's one, two, three, four strings down, four red strings. If you have a harp that has four red strings, a small harp, then you'll probably want to use the one that is third from the top, one, two, three one, two, three, and then the fourth one will be your lowest. Some of you may have a harp that only has three red strings, depending on how that harp is strung and tuned. And if that's the case, your job is easy because the middle C is in the middle. So now that we have that out of the way, find your middle C, mine is right here, and hopefully you already know you want to lightly close your hand with your thumb on top, and we're just going to use our second finger, the trigger finger, and when we play, we're going to close that finger and close the thumb on top. The, left, the note, the middle, C. Closing those fingers fully but not, not tight like a fist, just a light closing. And make sure your thumb is putting closing and putting a lid on, that's like, if this is the jar, then that's closing the lid on top. Just lightly closing. And you notice my hand isn't going all over the place. It's not going up and down, just right there, just closing. So that's your middle C. So now we know what that is, we're gonna start putting it together with notes on the page. Middle C is special. The five lines that music is notated on is called the staff. We'll start with the treble or the upper staff. And middle C is special because it has its own separate line below the treble staff. So it looks like this in the treble staff. Uh, so I'll put it here somewhere, uh, here or there. <laughs> and um, so that's what your C looks like. So now you can look at that note, middle C, and play it. 
and take another look at that note. Hopefully you have it on the page too. That's your C. Now D is the next note up. And the thing about the staff notation is each note has either a line or a space. So it's not line, 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 and it's not space, 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 space. It's line, space, line, space. So C, as I mentioned, has its own line. So middle C has its own line. So the space right above that, the note that sits on that line, so middle C is over the line. The, the note that's above it, that rests on top of the line, in between the two lines is D. The next note up. So you have your red C, and then the next note up is D. The next note up is on a line again, and that's the bottom line of the staff. It's on the staff, on the bottom line of the treble staff, E, E. So we have C is on the line, below the staff has its own special line that's just for that note. The space above that is D. Then the next line, the bottom line of the staff is E. The bottom space of the staff is F, which are blue or black strings. And that's what helps us. We, have, we know all of our black and blue strings are F, all of our red strings are C. So that bottom space within the staff is F. And you'll often hear people say, the spaces of the staff are F-A-C-E, they spell face. The next line right above F is G. The space above that G, and just that next space up is A. The line above that is B. and the space above that is C. And then it starts all over again after that space. But so now we look again at that space, that C is called an octave, eight notes octave, above middle C. So all the C's are an octave apart, but they show up at different places on that staff so you can read them where they're supposed to be. Now I'll try the left hand going down. And we're going down, so the alphabet goes backwards. Now here's the spe another special thing about middle C. On the bass clef, you have middle C above the bass clef on its own special line again just for that note. Those are called ledger lines. It has its own ledger line. So middle C, again, we're starting with our left hand. Again, you notice I have all my fingers just kind of loosely folded into my palm. And my second finger is going to come into my palm and my thumb close on top. Middle C in the bass clef. So remember in the treble clef, it has its own line below the treble clef. So middle C can show up in two slightly different places. And we're gonna go down now. We'll go down to the space below that ledger line of middle C is B, we're going down, C, B, A. B is the next one, the space below that line.
the first line going down in the bass clef is A. And then the first space that's fully on the bass staff going down is G, that top space on the staff. And then we're back to our F, our blue or black string. And that is the line below G. And if you're just starting out, one thing you can do as you're learning these is you can color your C's red and color your F's blue on, on your paper so that that helps you find your place. note below F is a space again, E. The note below that on the bass clef is D. And the next space is C, and the bass clef is C. So that's a very good way to practice learning your notes is that you look at the note, you identify the string, and you play it. And you play it three or four times with making sure you're keeping the motion right and your shoulder is relaxed, your arm is relaxed. Um, just author's note, I'm sitting a little high. If I were actually going to sit down and play this harp, I have a lower bench. I'm quite tall. I'm sitting in a normal chair, a dining room chair for this. But if I were going to really sit down and practice or play this harp, I would be on a bench that puts me about here so that I'd be in a better position and I don't have to, to scrunch down to play. So that's something to be aware of with your position. So now, I want to point something else out. We have the C, I'll remind you again, the middle C shows up on a ledger line in the treble, treble, the upper clef, it shows up on a ledger line below the clef. And in the bass, the bottom clef, we all know what bass is because that low bass guitar or double bass is low voice. So the bass clef, the middle C shows up at the top of that on its own special ledger line. But here's a little secret for figuring things out. Remember we played up to C an octave above middle C? That's not the top space on the treble staff, but it's the second space from the top on the treble staff. And the base C on the base staff is not the bottom space, but the next just above the bottom space. So you can kind of, that's kind of your visual map, is middle C, and then where is the next C? And then very special is the next high C has two ledger lines above the treble staff, staff and the Low C has two ledger lines below. So, you, so they're just all coming out from the middle in an equal fashion, high and low. So you can go ahead and repeat those visuals, identifying the note, playing the note, and maybe even kind of close your eyes after you've done it a while looking at them. See if you can visualize that note and then find the string. And it's okay to count. You're just learning this new language. You can count D is one up from C. A third or three up from C is E. A fourth or four up from C is F. And again, you can use F because it's another colored string. Use that as another place in your map, your mental map. G is right above F. A 
is a third above F. It's one, two, three. F, G, A. Three strings, a third. B is just above that A. B is also one note below C. And it's always one note below C wherever it appears. So that's uh, the very beginning of learning your notes on the page. And now I'm going to do something else that you can do without reading any other notes. We're just going to use those first notes, but they're going to help you identify notes in other octaves. So this is before you're learning to read the whole staff. We're just going to use that first octave. But you have your C, and this gets to be a little fun. You get to do a little glissade up to the next C. And remember, that's red. C, play it, and then glissade, glissando, up to the next C, an octave higher. And then D, one note above C, D, whoop, D, D, and glissando up. One note above C, that's the D. Both of those are Ds, an octave apart. And then E, three, two notes up from C. C is one, D is two. E is three, so that's a third, a third above C. E. E. And that E is flat. <laughs> that E is out of tune. And then your blue or black string, F. G, the note above F, G, up to the next G, A is a third above F, F is one, G is two, A is three, it's also a third below C, C, B, A. So from F, F, G, A, or down from C, C, B, A. Again, out of tune, sorry. B is one note below C. And this is now the C, an octave above middle C. Going up to two octaves above middle C. Middle C, an octave above, and two octaves above middle C. So that's another exercise where you can learn how to... Now, glissades are a whole nother topic. They're a whole different range of glissades. Some people insist that you do it with the fleshy part of your finger straight in. I was taught to do it kind of with your same hand position as playing and just kind of... There's a slightly different sound between them and eventually you'll be trying to learn all these different glissade sounds that you have. Because there are so many different ways to do glissades that make different sounds. But this is a fun way to learn those notes and learn the relative notes in the octaves above. And of course, now you can do the same thing down. You can, and you'll do the glissade with your thumb going down. So I hope this is helpful. These are just some very rudimentary exercises to see the note on the page, find the string, and play the string. Just for when you're just beginning to learn this language of notes on the page. I did this for one of my students. You know who you are. <laughs> and I hope I went ahead and posted this because I thought it might be useful.
for other people too. I hope this will help you start getting your hands on the harp so that you're not just looking at the notes on the page and you're not just playing the harp, not really knowing where you're going, but you're starting to use that language of the music notes on the staff to play the notes on the harp. So once again, all your C's are red, middle C, one octave above, middle C, one octave below, middle C, one octave above, two octaves above, middle C, one octave below, two octaves below. And then all of your F's are blue or black. I hope this has been helpful. I'm Cara Dahl Russell. Have fun exploring and learning how to play your harp.